Hey, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to episode 201 of The Virtual Couch. I am your host, Tony Overbay. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist, certified mindful habit coach, writer, speaker, husband, father, four, ultra marathon runner, and creator of The Path Back, an online pornography recovery program that is helping people reclaim their lives from the harmful effects of pornography in a strength-based, hold the shame, become the person you always wanted to be way. And also a co-author of He's a Porn Addict, Now What? An expert and former addict to answer your questions, in which I play the role of the expert which has uh, continued to be a bestseller on Amazon. So there will be links all over the show notes for that. But uh, I want to, to quickly ask you if you can take a second, follow me on Instagram at Virtual Couch, or you can find me at Tony Overbay Licensed Marriage and Family Therapist on Facebook. But today I want to get right to the interview. I'm kind of calling this one a mini interview. I, I interviewed Nate Bagley. And if you already know who Nate Bagley is, um, you're, you can already maybe anticipate or guess that there was a lot of excitement between the two of us. I felt like, and, and Nate said it, I don't know if it was on the interview or not, but that he felt like the, the cliche was true. Uh, he's a brother from another mother and he is a, an extremely positive guy. He's a relationship researcher who has some fascinating experience interviewing people all over the world in various types of relationships on what makes their relationship work or what, what makes their relationship not work. And so he, he's, uh, he hosts Utah's date night um, he's done an ex extensive amount of writing, recording, and, uh, and we talk about that a little bit in this interview. But the big thing that there is a purpose to this, because Nate has created an incredible program called the Epic Wives Experiment. And it sounds like, I mean, it is for wives, it is epic, and, and he's going to go into that in this interview in, de in great detail, but it is, it is not, as you'll hear us talk about, it's not putting blame or, or saying that wives, you must do everything in the marriage or in the relationship. But he's just out of his research um, over years of research has just compiled some information that he felt like he could target to wives that would really help um, make a change in a relationship. And I, I have to tell you, in our interview, I just, I love it. He has so much experience and, uh, and just data to work with. And I just kept jumping in there as a marriage therapist who sees, you know, 20 plus couples a week for the last 10, 15 years. And just, I, that's why I really like a lot of the things that he talks about. So jive with the uh, emotionally focused therapy, EFT, the couples therapy that I do. And just in, in the way that we want to be heard, we want to be cared about. So I just, I really like Nate's energy. And uh, so there's a couple of more weeks, the, the Epic Wives Experiment is live up until May 17th, I believe, at midnight. You can go sign up. And uh, he's created a, a link for me, which we don't talk about in the interview because he did that after. He was so kind. But I'll have the link in the show notes. But it's toniesexperiment.com. So if you just go to T-O-N-Y-S-E-X-P-E-R-I-M-E-N-T.com, toniesexperiment.com, that will take you to Nate's Epic Wives Experiment. And you can sign up there and just... Uh, and I don't know, it's going to help your marriage. And uh, I'm, I'm doing it as well, which I'm kind of excited about. So I'm going to talk about that too. But uh, I will give you more background on Nate, or we talk about that a little bit more in the interview. But he's a, he's a TED speaker. He's founder of uh, Growth Marriage, um, Utah Date Night. Um, he's got a, a wonderful podcast about marriage. And, uh, and he makes some pretty strong, I, you know, I, I feel like strong claims sounds like I'm saying, and I don't know about these but his, his, his data is good. And uh, so I really like what Nate's doing. So go to toniesexperiment.com, learn more about the Epic Wives Experiment. And uh, now let me get to the interview with my brother from another mother, Nate Bagley. Extremely funny and laughing. Like, uh, <laughs> right now I, feel like, now, I feel like it was too much of a setup, but now we are laughing anyway. Um, yes. So Nate, oh, and right now the air conditioner kicks in. Is that too loud or can you hear it? No, nah, I can't hear it. Perfect, okay. Uh, Nate Bagley, welcome to the virtual couch. Tony, great to be here. This know, couch is so cozy. It, it does, isn't it though? I mean, I'm able to You didn't tell that. me it would feel so good to sit here. That's right. Um, so I would love to just jump right in and talk about your, you know, your program. But first, can you give my audience a little bit about, tell me, who is Nate Bagley? <laughs> Yeah, let me tell you a little bit about my backstory here. Um, and that'll, that'll explain why I'm sitting on your couch right now. Okay. So, uh, I don't know, eight, nine, nine years ago, eight or nine years ago, I, I quit my job because um, I had a question. And that question was, what am I doing wrong in all of my relationships mm. that's, that's keeping me from having the love that I want? So I was single. I desperately wanted to get married. I was ready to settle down. But, and, I, and I knew if I got married, I wanted to have a ridiculously awesome marriage. Yes. I didn't want to be like 
just tolerating my marriage day to day. Um, and I had seen people in my life who had these extraordinary marriages and I was like, what are they doing? What are these people doing that, that makes their marriage so look so wonderful? And then other people just seem like miserable. Yeah. And I decided when I quit my job um, that I would just travel the country and spend some time interviewing these couples. And so I interviewed hundreds of couples from all walks of life all over the country. I interviewed people from arranged marriages, people who are religious, people who are non-religious, people in polygamous families, um, gay, gay couples and straight couples, like just people from every walk of life who had something special. Wow. And my goal was to figure out, okay, what can we do? And how can I kind of take the things that those people are doing right and distill them into our lives so that we can have really ridiculously awesome marriages. Um, and that's kind of how I got my, my start in this marriage space. Um, and people can find that. I know you've done uh, Ted talks. I mean, you've got uh, yeah, yeah. a documentary. Are you okay sharing a little bit of what you learned? What are some of the big takeaways you found from those interviews? Yeah. Um, I mean, there's a lot of really interesting takeaways. I think one of the really big ones um, is that, and this is, I haven't, I want to explore talking about this in this way because I haven't really talked about it before. And I feel like you're a good person to talk about this with. I can't wait. Um, do, we, I, do we even save some of this for later? Do you give us a little sneak preview? And this is a, hey. Yeah, maybe. yeah, yeah. This is just a little okay. teaser. Perfect. Um, and it, and it, segues, it segues in really beautifully to, I think, what we're going to talk about later on. Um, but I think one of the things that makes humans humans is that we are creators. Mm. Like there's not really a whole lot of other animals that have the capacity to take a bunch of just random stuff or junk or, you know, stuff you can find anywhere and turn it into something meaningful. And, you know, like human beings are incredible at this. You know, you can take a bunch of paints and make a gorgeous landscape. Um, you can take a, a you could take like a, 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 some, some wood and some brass or some strings and you can make instruments and then you can create beautiful music with it. Like we are a masters at arranging things in a way that creates something beautiful. And I think one of the ways that we can express our creativity is through the relationships that we create. Yeah. And the truly extraordinary couples were very cognizant of their capacity for creation. You know, one of my favorite things about, um, about scripture, if you go back to the very first chapter and the very first couple of verses of Genesis is God introduces himself, not as our father, but as the creator of the universe. Wow. His, his identity is to, for, for us is like, Hey, I'm a creator. And then later he says, you're my children. Like I'm your father. And, but I think inherently imbued in us is that that sense of like creative, that, that godly creation, the ability to create. Does that make sense? Oh, it, uh, not only does it make sense, I got the chills this is the part where I wish I had hair still because it would have <laughs> a little bit. <clears throat> but, and this is something I would love to explore with you because, um, and, and I honestly am having a moment here, Nate, because as a marriage therapist and I promote this emotionally focused therapy, this EFT model. Yeah, EFT is amazing. Right, and in, in essence, you've got a person with their own private individual experiences that then is getting married to someone with their own private individual experiences. And as a marriage therapist, where they they flourish and thrive is when it's both they can both kind of um, edify each other and then take those two individual experiences and then create and, yeah. and I feel like what I run into far too often is the well why do you think that well why do you feel that way well I can't that what do you think that does for me and yeah and then we get into this endless loop of just you know trying to defend our own values our own mm. beliefs coming up with a better analogy of why well it's like this you know to try to convince the other person that they're wrong in essence. Yeah. So, no, you're, this is, you're on something big. Oh, yeah. cool. Yeah. So I'm just noodling with this idea lately, but uh, I think there's something really, really powerful when you realize that the stuff that I bring into the relationship and the stuff that you bring into the relationship, yeah. we can either use it as weapons and like hit each yeah. other and tear each other down, or we can use them as tools to create something ridiculously awesome that nobody else on the planet has. No, and that's, that's beautiful. I mean, it really is. Cause I mean, yeah. just not to shut down the other person's reality. I always say that it's not, it's, it's not just that, that, that didn't devolve into an argument, but then when it, when it's, I hear you and tell yeah. me about that, it's exponentially better. Yeah. And, and one of the heartbreaking things for me, and you probably see this a lot, you can tell me, maybe I'm mistaken here, but I, I'm pretty sure that you probably see this a lot is you get, um, I see, and I see this very commonly among wives um, I see, I talk to a lot of wives and I see them feeling burned out, stressed, overwhelmed, depleted, anxious, um, maybe even growing a little bit resentful because yeah. if you go back to their wedding day, 
what they thought that they were going to have. And then what they have now are two very different things. You know, yeah. they feel like all this responsibility weighing them down. They feel a sense of obligation to like keep everybody happy. And it's just like this really, really heavy thing. And to me, like this is, it's like heartbreaking. Yeah. It's to me, that's um, when somebody is in that situation, I think oftentimes they've lost touch with their ability to create their own reality, to create their own relationship. And oftentimes they find themselves in a position where there's like life is happening to them and their marriage is happening to them instead of for them. Yeah. And um, so kind of what my mission has been over these last couple of years, since I went on this crazy road trip and started learning all these things is how can I kind of awaken people to the power that they have to to create a new reality for themselves. Like ultimately your marriage is made up of choices. That's mm. like the creative, if you're, if you're painting a picture, you have canvas and, and paints and a paintbrush. If you're taking, doing photography, you have a camera and you have like, a, you know, paper that you print it out on. Um, you know, if you're doing woodworking, you've got tools and wood, but if you're creating a marriage, you have choices. Yeah. Okay. And, and your choices are what shape your reality. And a lot of people are making cho their choices unconsciously. And they don't realize how much power their choices have. And they've chosen themselves into this world that they hate yeah. and, or, or they resent that they're not enjoying. And my, it brings me so much joy to like lift up the veil from people's eyes and help them realize like, oh, I can make different choices. And it's not that hard to create a completely different reality. As a matter, matter of fact, within a few days, I can create a reality that I love. Mm. And I can feel that energy come back and I can feel the stress lift off my shoulders and I feel more in partnership with my husband or my wife and like magic, magic starts to happen when we embrace our divine creative power and start making like really powerful choices in our lives. I love it. And so is that a lot of then again, what has led you to create this program that you have this one? Yeah. Okay. And, yeah. and so it's, it's targeted. I mean, it's the Epic Wives Experiment. Uh -huh. And, you know, I'm curious, have you run into anyone that is, is kind of saying, well, what about my husband? You know, it's, it, uh -huh. yeah. 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 So talk about that. Yeah. That's like the first question I always get is I'm already doing everything. Why do I need to do exactly. more? Right. Yeah. 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 And what I tell them is, um, that's part of the reason you need to do this program. Mm -hmm. uh, like the Epic Wives experiment is designed to show you the things that you're doing that are putting you in a position where you're requiring yourself to do everything. Mm, okay. Um, and, and so the, the interesting thing about a, a relationship is that a relationship is, um, it's like a, it's, it's a dynamic between two people. And if you shift how you show up, yeah. if you shift your side of the equation, it automatically puts pressure on your partner to engage differently. Yeah. And, and what's really interesting is like, we have these, we've had over um, 600 women participate in the last couple of months and they show up and a lot of them are like, uh, whatever. Like, I think I have a pretty good marriage, but I'm just here to support a friend or, you know, like you made promises that like, if I do it and I don't get any results, I'll get a refund. So it wouldn't hurt to try out. And they show up kind of reluctantly and not really thinking anything will happen. And then after like two or three days, I literally have women met, sending me messages or posting in the Facebook group in tears saying like, oh my gosh, my husband just opened up to me for the first time wow. and he's been an introvert and I just followed, did these little tweaks and all of a sudden he like approached me and started crying and said, thank you for this thing. Or he bought me flowers and he hasn't bought me flowers in a decade. Or he started helping me around the house and doing things that I've been begging him to do for a long time. And now I'm not even asking him and he's doing him. What is happening? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, it's, you're choosing, you're creating creating you're using your choices to create a different system a different marriage for yourself and um your husband becomes part of that creation like it's a that's one of the cool things about marriage is it's not a it's not a one person creation it's a co-creation yeah when i and, like uh, a lot of times and maybe you're maybe this is kind of what you're saying too is i will have <clears throat> women in my office that will clearly say <clears throat> excuse me bless your heart i mean i you are it, it has to feel like you're doing everything and the last yeah. thing i want to do is feel like telling you anything to do differently or no. is it's going to feel like, wait a minute, don't you understand? I mean, I just told you I'm doing everything. Yeah. But, but sometimes I do feel like it's the man. Okay. Noted. And I'm not even arguing that like that, that has to be hard, but we kind of know what this looks like, what this, yep. this version does. Right. Yep. And, and I think a lot of times it's like, well, yeah, but I'm just waiting for him to do something. Oh different. And, man. Right? Tony <laughs> waiting, waiting for something to happen. Like hoping that things will yeah. change is the worst strategy to create the marriage that you want. Yeah. There are so many people out there who have a dream of what they want their marriage to be. 
and they're just waiting and that's their strategy. Yeah. And, and I'm like, you have so much more power than that. You have so much more power to make the marriage that you, that you want. Or actually I would argue that when I ask people what they I would love to hear what you think about this, but when I ask people what they actually want in their marriage, it's not that grandiose. Like people are not very big dreamers. Right. And, and when they start doing this stuff, like when, when they start going through EFT and creating emotional safety with each other, or when they go through the Epic Wives experiment and start kind of doing some of these little things that make a big difference, they start to realize that their marriage is even better than the marriage that they actually thought they wanted. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I think they find out that, and tell me this is where you're going to, I feel like we, we ultimately want to know that we matter or that our, our partner wants to hear us or that they care about us or yeah. they just want to, they want to get to know us. They want to hear what we think and feel and dream. It's not that we have to, yeah, like you say, grandiose, you know, own an Island off the Florida Keys and drive or whatever. And those would be, those would be fine. But I mean, that's that stuff where I think people are going after that because that will make the marriage better. Not the, right. the things that you and I are talking about here. No, I love yeah. that. I don't know if you're, are you a acceptance and commitment therapy guy? Do you know that model act? It's a, Oh no, I haven't heard that much act, about act it. Just, it's kind of a grew from CBT cognitive behavioral therapy, but mm -hmm. they have a term called um, experiential avoidance. And I feel like that's a lot of that just waiting, hoping that things will happen. It's that kicking the can mm -hmm. down the road. It's like, you know what? I'll work on this marriage. Actually, I'll do it later when the kids are out of school or I'll do it oh. when, right. When, uh, when, I don't know, we're better financially or whatever. And we yep. can, brain is so good at just kicking that can down the road for so good. Right. So that's why I like, so you're kind of saying, all right, I hear you, you know, especially the wives you, you you're doing a lot, but it's not a huge tweak that would actually yeah. have you, have you be heard. Yep. And, and what I found is success leaves clues. Mm. And so there are people out there who have ridiculously awesome marriages. And if you go, like I went and studied these couples yeah. and you can read about them in research. Like the Gottmans have done a lot of amazing mm. research and Sue yeah. Johnson, like there's all these amazing people who've done all this research and they found the clues. They found the things that, hey, when couples do these things, what happens is their relationship gets really awesome. And yeah. so like the cool thing, the cool thing that we do, like you do and I do, is we try and just like nudge people in the direction of the success, the, the trail of success. Yeah. And it's like, if you just kind of embrace these little things, like um, one of the things that, that you kind of hit on is um, like people feeling like they already do everything. Why should I do more? Like the, one of the things that we focus on in the second week of the Epic Wives experiment is responsibility. Mm. And we talk about, okay, what are you responsible for and what are you not responsible for? Because if you are trying to take responsibility for something that's completely outside your control, you're going to go nuts. Yeah. And if you're trying to make other people responsible for things that are within, that are only within your control, you're going to drive them nuts and you're going to go crazy because you're not going to get the results you want because you're waiting for them to give you the results that you could create for yourself. And like that one week by itself has so many women go, Oh, part of the reason I'm so stressed out and overwhelmed is either because I'm trying to control everything and 80% of the stuff I'm trying to control is way outside. Like I can't control how my husband thinks or feels or yeah, what yeah. he says or how he reacts. I can't control it. All I can control is myself or like I'm making my husband responsible or my, I, it's, I work with wives in this program. So it's all, you know, w mm -hmm. women, but um, you know, like I make my husband responsible when I feel emotion, when I feel sad or angry or I make him responsible when I lash out, I tell him it's his fault. And it like the moments that you start to take responsibility for the things that are yours and give up trying to control the things that are not your responsibility, like that one little principle alone lifts this massive burden off these women's shoulders yeah. and it calls their husbands to action. Like, well, so I love that you're saying that too. And, and I'll throw it. I know you've got a, a, a LMFT working with you too. I mean, a, a yeah. kindred soul of mine. And I feel like all I want to say is like that, 10 second, you know, again, and uh, we, we get it. Like we understand that that isn't something that you, you know, it's not always fair and that would be hard. And, but it's like, but kind of now what, right. And I love that that's yeah. what your program is kind of saying. We acknowledge all of that and it yep. shouldn't be as hard. And, and I hear you. Cause I feel like a lot of times, you know, I just see that in my office. If I start saying, well, what about this? Or have you thought about this? You get that immediate, that psychological reactance, that pushback that, you know, well, you don't get it. So that's why I really like what you're saying. It's like, no, no, yeah. we, we, I hear you bless your heart. We don't want you to feel like you're trying to do what you have to do more, but just trust us for a little bit here. Yeah. Okay. It, well, that's part of the reason we call it an experiment. Okay. We're not like saying you're required to do this. I'm just saying like, here, we found some really cool things that have gotten um, amazing results for a lot of people. Mm. And what I want you to do is go do an experiment. 
And a great, a great like structure for an experiment is you detach yourself from the results. Well, like, that. like you go test it out and then you go, Oh, what's going to happen? I don't know. Is something going to explode? Is it going to be like really pretty? Is it going to be amazing? And so when, uh, what we're finding is that when people show up without the expectation of mm. some magical thing is going to happen, um, they can leave the experiments that don't work the way they want to the side. And every so often they're going to stumble across something that just provides ridiculously awesome results and they can hold on to that and they keep doing it. And so like, I, I don't want to be prescriptive with yeah. people's marriages. I'm not going to say your marriage has to look a certain way, right. but what I will say is if you go play around a little bit and experiment with a, making a little bit different choices or ch like changing the way that you say a specific thing or, or do a specific thing in your marriage, all of a sudden you're going to start getting different. You you're automatically going to start getting different results. Yeah. And the hope is how can we fast track your way to the very best results by doing these experiments. So I, love it. I was going to say there's a, I haven't talked about this one much, but um, I like when you were saying that even when sometimes the wife might be expecting a different result from the husband and he is actually unaware of it, that, you yeah. know, I always love when we have that a guy finds out that he was failing a test that he didn't even know he was taking until he did <laughs> yeah. grade and now he's handed, yeah. here's your F and look at how bad. And he's like, I didn't even know. I mean, didn't yeah. find it. So I didn't know I was taking a test. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He would have studied harder. Probably wouldn't have done well anyway, but yeah. I mean, right. Um, but I, okay. I love it. So what, so what, what do people do? You know, what's kind of the next step um, with your, the Epic Wives experiment? Yeah. So we are launching um, May 18th, May 17th is the last day. So it's like uh, three weeks, three weeks from now, two weeks from now, two weeks from now. Uh, when we're recording this and this, I don't know when this is going to go up, but get it out as soon as I can. And I'm going to cool. have, I'm going to have links in the show notes of where people can go to sign up. That is the best way to sign up. Okay. So just go to Tony's website yeah. and find this thing and click the link and sign up. And uh, it would be amazing. Like I, my goal is to help another couple hundred women through this process and create wow create miracles, like create transformation. Yeah. And, and that's what it is. It's a fun creation process. It's like creating a work of art, but the work of art is your marriage and you just get to create whatever the heck you want. And it's really empowering. Well, and so some of the things too, if I, do you got a couple more minutes, if that's okay. Yeah, I got as many minutes okay. as you want, Perfect. man. No, this is good. So um, I liked even you've got a, a video on your website and you're, you're humorous, which I always enjoy anyway, oh, but, right? but there's like that <laughs> part though, where, I mean, you kind of cover all the things where, I mean, we've alluded to a couple of them before, but I mean, I, I run into a lot of people that just feel alone in their marriage. And I think that that feeling alone or that, and at times the way that they present is they withdraw because they're hoping that they will be seen by their partner. I mean, is that, do you hear that a lot, that being alone or feeling like they're by themselves? Constantly. And it's like one of the most, one of the beautiful things about marriage is that when you have a great marriage, it makes the rest of your life incredible. Like it, it levels it up. But when you're struggling in your marriage and you are feeling alone, it makes everything else in your life a lot more difficult. And I get, we get a lot of people, um, it's a lot of wives joining the Epic Wives experiment because they're, they're feeling disconnected. They're mm -hmm. feeling like their partner's not interested. Their partner's not engaged. Their partner doesn't love them anymore. Something has shifted. They don't understand why they can't get their, their husband to open up and, and just say like what they're fe thinking or yeah. feeling or what's bothering them. And they just feel like they're isolated. Like they're stuck in roommate syndrome. Like they're, I don't know, just they're, they're not married anymore. They're just kind of like existing in this comfortable routine that just feels lonely. What I, what I like what you said too, is I think that a lot of times a, a woman or a wife might even say, well, I, I've asked him. I mean, and he says nothing or he's fine. And so what else am I supposed to do? I think yeah. what you're saying is, okay, well, let's, let's do some experiments then. Cause it's again, noted yeah, man. that you've asked, right? And yeah, what, one of the most, one of the most heartbreaking things for me, um, is real going through this program, realizing or watching wives realize how important they are to their husbands when they don't, even though they don't realize it. Like one of the things um, I talk about often is how, like if my wife has a bad day, she has sisters that she can call or a mom. She's got her best friends from high school that she's really close with. And they have like a texting chain. There's like support groups on Facebook for, for women. And like, there's just so many opportunities for emotional support. And most likely if she has a rough day, you know, she can jump on the phone and it's like, and she, look, you're an amazing wife or you're an amazing mom or you're an amazing, you fill in the blank. Like, it's going to be okay. You're going to be all right. We're here for you. You know, you get a fresh start tomorrow. And it's like the pep talk, you know, yeah. but I don't know many guys no. that when they have a rough day or they feel like a failure or they drop the ball or they just are depressed and sad that they have a guy that they can turn to and be like, and he'll be like, 
you're the best dad in the world. You're such a good, you're such a good husband. Like you just need to keep your chin up. You're going to be fine, buddy. Like you go dad. Mm. Now we don't get those pep talks. And the only real place that most men get that emotional support and connection is through their wives. Yeah. And you got to know that even if your marriage is in a rough place right now, if your husband isn't opening up to you, he has no one. Yeah. Most likely he is completely alone. Well, that, and, you're so right. And that's where, you know, I deal so much with the, the, the addiction side of that. And then that really is, I feel like that's no one wakes up in the morning and says, I think I want to go act out, but it's typically when yeah. they feel like they have nowhere else to turn. And then the brain just locks in and says, okay, you just got to tune out here for a little bit. Yeah. They, they, right. And, and so, you know, with a lot of the work I do, it's trying to get them to be better husbands and fathers and feel better in their career and their faith and their health. And mm-hmm. so I love what you're saying. I mean, you know, yeah. that's, that's something to Maybe, maybe that's what we need to fix next, Nate. You know, how do we Yeah, do I want to. I'm working on an epic husband's experiment. But I mean, part of the way I built the epic wives experiment was by talking to lots and lots of men. Like I, I listened to lots of women about what they were struggling with. But then I went and talked to the husbands too. And I'm like, hey, what makes you feel disengaged? And like, what, make, what's, what happens in your marriage when you just kind of want to shut down and be invisible? And what, ha- what, what are the things that happen in your marriage? Or what does your wife do that makes you want to be your very best self? Or that fills your tank and makes you want to show up like a freaking knight in shining armor? Mm-hmm. You know, what are the things that make you feel like a hero? And I'm talking to these guys and learning all of these things about what motivates them. And I'm having these men literally break down into tears saying, I would just like die if my wife said this or did this for me. And then on the flip side, I see, I talk to these women and saying like, all I want is my husband to do this. And like, all it takes is one person to show up a little bit differently. And, and so like part of what we do is we give these women a recipe to help their husbands kind of feel a little bit more heroic. And when your husband feels like a hero, guess what? He shows up like one. And like we had, there's, I love this story. Um, I've got a million stories, but this one always stands out to me. There's this woman in like the, it was the first week of the Epic Wives experiment. And she was just feeling so stressed and one of she was working um, evenings and she was she got off really at different times every evening. Mm-hmm. And so getting dinner wet ready was really stressful for her because she just never knew when she was going to get off her shift. And so one night she just um, called home and she's like, honey, I'm going to be late. Could you please just take care of dinner? It would mean so much to me. And he goes, yeah, no problem. And so she comes home, dinner's ready. And she pulls him aside and she expresses gratitude using this formula that we teach these, these women. And um, he looks at her and he goes, oh my gosh. I had no idea that this was stressing you out so much. Would it be, would it, would you be cool if I just like took care of dinner from now on? Like you just don't have to worry about it. I will cook dinner every night. And she burst into tears and she's like, you would do that. And he's like, yeah, I had no idea. Like he gets a time to shine, you know? And he's like, I would love to take the tort. Like I would love to be the hero for you. And it completely changed this huge dynamic. This took this huge stress off of her shoulders and it just came from, expressing gratitude in a specific way, just one little shift in the way you express gratitude. And all of a sudden dinner is no longer your responsibility. Well, I love that. I, I, the, I always say somebody has got to come out of the bunker first. I mean, that's what, yeah. happens, right. And then, and then you get good at that. And then the fights, the actual, the fights become trying to, you're running out of the bunker toward each other, you know, well, it's magic, dude. Happen? It's amazing. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you have this, this, you have the formula, Nate. I'm very yeah. excited about this, right? It's a lot of fun. Okay. I'm so excited about it, man. People are going to go, they're going to go sign up. Uh, I'll have a link on my website. I'll have a link through the show notes of this and cool. then um, they can go find you. And then you and I have plenty more to talk about. I want to dig more into some of the things that you learned in your interviews. I want to hear I'd love that. all that sort of stuff and about, you know, I don't know all things Nate. That would be and then great. I need to get you on our show. Anytime. I don't know. Yeah. I love that. I feel like We're just, uh, we just got to find a time on our schedule to sync up. Exactly. So, all right, Nate Bagley, thank you so much for taking the time to come on the virtual couch. I can't wait to have you. My on. pleasure. My pleasure. Okay.